On Sunday, we had the Russian Grand Prix. Now, here's my question. Is it Sachi or Sochi? Like, the American way is probably Sochi. But I would imagine the British way to say that is Sachi. So someone write in let me know. I'm curious what the correct one is. Either way, it was a wild race. And I felt horrible for McLaren driver Landon Norris. He led basically the entire race. And then on lap 47 of 53, it started raining. And then with four laps to go, Lewis Hamilton, who was in second place, took a pit stop. And then after the pit stop, Lewis Hamilton in second place had three laps to make up a 25.8 second gap. And I'm like, well, like, Lando has a shot. And then it started to downpour. Heavy, heavy torrential rain. And Lando lost all the grip. Sliding everywhere. Couldn't, it could, it's just awful. And you see the lead slipping away farther and farther. And in the end, Lewis Hamilton won the race. Max Verstappen got second. And it was a tragedy for Lando. It was terrible. He finished in seventh. I felt so bad for him. Heartbreaking loss. And that leads me to a question from William on Patreon. William wrote in and said this. He said, man, I am absolutely gutted for Lando. At the time, I loved the decision to stay out. He was so confident. But at some point, you have to trust your engineers and the data they have. Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, and it could have easily been Hamilton struggling with inters on a dry track. But if you're in Norris's shoes, do you listen to the team and box? So, of, of course, like logically, with hindsight, Lando should have been taken a pit stop, put on wet tires, intermediates. But you, you, know, you got to understand, you know, in, in pit lane, the team has the radar and the weather information not Lando Norris, like, absolutely. But then put yourself in Lando Norris's shoes psychologically. You're in first place. You've led the entire race. You desperately want to win this race. It feels so counterintuitive to box and give up your lead. Like, okay, Hamilton's going to box. That gives me a 25-second gap in three laps. Like, there's no way he can make that up in a normal race. You can never make up a 25-second gap in three laps unless your tire's blown out. So I totally get why Lando Norris stayed out. It was a coin flip. It's just, will it rain more or will it rain less? That's the question. Or will the rain hold off long enough for me to finish this drive? And frankly, Lando just guessed wrong. It's sad, but it's true. If the rain had held off for five more minutes, five more minutes, three more laps, Lando wins the race. Lando would have been right. It sucks that it happened the way it did for Lando. Sometimes, though, you take a risk and you lose. Like, that's just how it works sometimes. And I think it is a good lesson, though, for Lando and McLaren, building trust and learning to trust the team orders. That There's something there that can be gleaned in the note-taking process for Lando, like figuring out how do we make sure this doesn't happen in the future. But I, I just, I got to say, I felt so horrible for Lando Norris. Now, the other big story from this race is Max and Lewis Hamilton. Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton... Max had a double penalty going into the race, a three-place grid penalty for the crash with Lewis in Italy, not to mention then a penalty for a new power unit. So he had to start last in the Russian Grand Prix. He finished the race in second. Unbelievable. You know, the rain helped Max for sure get to second. But the outcome was insane because after the race, Max and Lewis still are neck and neck in the F1 driver standings. In the F1 standings, there's only a two-point gap between them. Here are the driver standings. You have Lewis is in first with 246.5 points. Max is in second in the driver standings with 244.5 points. Third is Valtteri Bottas, 151 points. Fourth is Lando Norris, 139 points. Fifth is Sergio Perez, 120 points. Well, let's, let's talk about the team, you know, constructor standings. I might as well mention them. In first, you have Mercedes with 397.5 points. Red Bull is in second with 364.5 points. McLaren is third in the driver's standings. There's a big gap there between second and third. McLaren has three, uh, 230, 234 points, over 100 points less than Red Bull. Ferrari's in fourth at 216.5 points. And the wetter weather, when the rain came in at Saatchi, it created chaos. It was, it was like ridiculous what happened. And in the end, I just cannot believe that Max got second in this race. It's like, it's shocking. Because with 11 laps to go, remember, Max was in 7th place with 11 laps to go, and he got stuck in 7th. He got passed by Fernando Alonso. That's how bad things were going. 
And then the rain came in, created chaos. Max took advantage, got into second. It was like an unbelievable finish for Max Verstappen. Like, just the, the Red Sea parted, and he got the opportunity of a lifetime to keep the gap between him and Lewis really, really tight. And we only have a handful of races left to go this year. And it's shaping up to be one of the best finishes of all time to a Formula One season. It's one of those special years where it's going to come right down to the very end. And that, that so rarely happens. Usually by like this point of the year, frankly, Lewis Hamilton has won by like 100 points. And you're like, wow, Lewis, once again, F1 champion, no competition. Like it's, we're so lucky. You have to, if you're a Formula One fan, you have to appreciate what we're building up to. This incredible finish where we don't know. Max Verstappen versus Lewis Hamilton. Either one could win. Are they going to crash into each other? Could that be a factor? Let's hope not. Likely, we're, we think that Lewis is going to have to get another engine swap and then take a penalty and start at the back of one of the races coming up. Like, it's an unbelievable way to start the year. And I just, like, I'm blown away. I'm like, wow, I cannot believe what's going on. The ending in F1 this year is going to be crazy. It's just such a special year. You better appreciate it. If you're an F1 fan, what a way to end the year. I have a weird side note, by the way, about this Grand Prix. Uh, the telephoto lenses. Go, anyone ever curious about Saatchi? I am. And the telephoto lenses they used at this track were amazing. They made the mountains. It, the way you use telephoto lenses, it makes the mountains look way closer in the background than they really are. And it made it look like the mountains in, in Saatchi, Russia, were like looming over the track. It was so cool. Beautiful work. And Saatchi looks like a really cool place. Uh, like this amazing geographic location where you have mountains and sea and a tropical climate. It's really lush and green, lots of rainwater. This is rare, special location. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever go to Russia. But if I do, Saatchi is on my bucket list. And I would love, love to get there someday if it's ever possible. I just That would be a really, really cool trip. Maybe go to a Grand Prix there. It looks like a really cool town. I just, I can't get over the mountains and the, the sea and it's just the greenery. It's like such a beautiful place. And it really, it reminds me of where I live in Hawaii. Honestly, it's like, it's, a, it's like a bigger, higher, taller mountain in Hawaii. It's very, very unique and very, very cool. 